What was the kit you were using back in your Dixieland days? I started off with a, what era was it? It would have been a mix, a, 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 a mid 60s premiere kit. Mm. And it was before they did a, the complete revamp. If you were to buy a premiere catalog in 1969, it would have the new shape lugs, it would have international size 12 inch and 16, the uh, lock fast stands, it was all really nice. I couldn't afford that. Uh, so I got a used secondhand premier kit, which was pre-international size. So the 12 inch Tom was a little smaller and the 16 inch Tom was a little bigger. And it was a 20 inch bass drum, 16 by 20, with uh, automatic legs with a spring and a 12 by eight mm. and a, a 14 by five, all wood uh, drums. Mm. And uh, I bought that for 70 pounds in 1969. And I had to pay my mom back, you know, five pounds. Which would be the equivalent of how much today? Oh, I have no idea. A lot more. <laughs> oh, shit, of course, of course. Yeah, considering uh, in those days when I did a gig with my dad in 1969, I probably would have got three pounds fifty mm. for the gig, or maybe sometime if it was in London, maybe six fifty seven, and we had just mm. changed to the decimal. So thing. that's ten to twenty gigs just to. Oh yeah, and I had to pay my mum rent. Yeah. Right. She was on my case straight away. She said, "You are now earning money. You pay me rent," <laughs> which <laughs> I think was very good, of course. but maybe a little bit Victorian. <laughs> I mean, she was, they, my, my parents were very old fashioned. Yeah, but, but still, that's, <clears> you know, teaching I paid my way the ways of life, you know. Yeah. And, I mean, that's from, life. That's the way it, is it life. functions, you know. From yeah. 12 years old, I yeah. understood about having to pay your way. Yeah. And I got my first tax return when I was 15 years old. Mm. That was rough. And I didn't, what, what is, what, what? And my dad explained, I said, the government take money? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So he would <clears throat> he would put me on his tax return mm. and make the deductions. And mm. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, I've been paying tax since oh, I was 15 yeah. years old. So as you were uh, progressing, uh, what were the, the other kits that you were getting, you know, a bit later? <clears throat> well, obviously, I was looking at the, uh, the Premier catalogue all the time. Oh, yeah. I would update the stands. I updated this, but I was really, really upset when I bought my Remo heads for the Tom Toms and they wouldn't fit. Mm. Went, oh no, why won't they fit? And that's when I learned about the different sizes and I went, oh dear, I'm gonna have to use Everplay. Actually, I did use Remo on the 12 because I could, it sat underneath the, the hoop. But, and then I always wanted a Ludwig drum kit. Always wanted a Ludwig, mm. but they were so expensive. Well, that was the hype back in the day. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then another, drum kit came out called Heyman mm. and they were much more affordable because they were made in in England uh, they had some nice colors and a lot of I got the Heyman catalog that all these drummers were using I said okay I'm gonna get a Heyman kit it's half the price of a Ludwig and so in 19 I think I think in 72 I bought a Heyman drum kit and actually my dad knew Ivor Arbiter, who was the importer. He got me a special deal on it. We got it straight from the wholesalers. And I bought a bunch of Rogers cymbal stands and pedal and hi-hat, because they were the CBS, CBS Arbiter. That was the, the company. So it was Fender CBS back then. I got it. I didn't like the bass drum pedal at all. I didn't like the hi-hat. I'd already got a Ludwig hi-hat, which I was loving. So I said, okay, let's get a Speed King. So I took the other one back. And and then slowly just replaced everything with Ludwig stands. <laughs> and then in 1973, I got my first Ludwig drum kit. Oh, okay. Again, from the same place. And I'd already got a deal there. So it was lucky I could get, I could get them at a mm. reduced price. And I got a Ludwig Big Beat outfit, which was in black. Mm. 22, 14, 16, 16, 13, 9. And um, yeah, so that was it. the early sessions you did on that kit, actually. All on Ludwig. Yeah. yeah, I then, because the session thing started to grow, I had to get a second kit mm. because uh, there wasn't, uh, we had a guy in London who would pack the kit, actually you'd pack it, he would pick it up, drop it off at the other studio, but if you had a session from 10 to one and another one at two to five, you had to have somebody to take your kit there. 
Yeah. That, that was the thing. So I had to get two kits. And then by this time I had two racks and one floor. So uh, that was Ludwig also. So I had two Ludwig mm. small kits and yeah. 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 So you had that right until your Tama deal? And no. You were using no, 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 no. One of the drum kits I always dreamed about. Uh, I did have a big Heyman kit, double mm. kit, which I was using for the band that I was in. Um, in 75 but I was always looking at the Ludwig catalogue the Ludwig Octoplus my first trip to the States was in 1974 and that's the kit I got over there but it wasn't mine it was the management's company so when I got back to England in 75 I started doing a lot of sessions I saw there was a set of concert toms on sale in one of the stores I bought the concert toms mm. Ludwig Octoplus concert toms. Mm. So I had two white bass drums, mahogany uh, concert toms. I can't remember what I used, and maybe the white floor tom, maybe something mm. like that. Mm. Even the studio, it didn't matter, you know. And then in 1976, I rang Manny's in New York and ordered two bass drums and a floor tom to match the kit. And then by uh, spring 76 I had my first Ludwig Octoplus and that I used for every album from uh, 76 onwards mm. up until 79 mm. which is when I got my Tama mm. deal and my mm. first dr uh, Tama drum kit arrived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay also you're an experienced producer and engineer and mm -hmm. you're very much into that kind of thing yep. which I suppose helps a bit when recording not even when you're recording your own stuff, but when you do have a producer and engineer. Or yeah, do so you actually leave things with the producer? And, and oh, yeah. 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 I mean, <clears throat> the thing you have to do is you have to respect the, the situation that you're in. And if you're being hired as a drummer, then you're not going to be the producer or the engineer. Mm -hmm. You're going to be the drummer. But <clears throat> these days and for quite a few years, the engineer has called me. He's talked to me about what mics I want to use, all this stuff. I said, well, look, I can, I can bring my preferred mics if you like. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, that would be great. Mm. Because from the engineer's point, he knows, you know, he knows what I do. Yeah, he's exactly. heard my records. He's heard the drum sound. Exactly. Frankly, he wants to get it right, and he wants it as easy as possible and mm -hmm. as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. So he knows by doing that. They even, he even, uh, some people even ask me to mic up. Mm. He said, would you, would you, you want to do it? I said, sure, uh, yeah, no mm. problem. And that's great that an engineer uh, respects my uh, um, engineering mm. capability mm. enough and is not, you know, doesn't have too much of an ego to let that. Mm. He's quite happy, you know. And if he comes out and says, you know what, I wouldn't mind changing this and this. I said, hey, go for it. You know, there's more, there's many ways to <laughs> skin a cat, as it yeah. were, you know. Um, so, and, and the same with the producer. Uh, the producer, you know, I respect his thing there, but you know, uh, if he asks my opinion, sure. Mm. You know, I'll say, well, you know, maybe we should do it this way. I mean, that, the whole thing is to work together, mm. not against each other. Yeah. You know, you're, you're there for the common cause, which is to make a recording and as best as you can. Mm. And that, that's what it's all about. Mm. When things don't go so well, if it doesn't sound so good, then I kind of might say, guys, this is not sounding great. Um, would you mind if, if I have a little bit of input here and blah, 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 and let's try to make this work. And, uh, you know, that's usually what happens. Ah, so in this respect, it probably helps a great deal, the fact that the expertise that you have in engineering and things, yeah. right? Well, uh, it's, it's a large drum kit. It's also a drum kit that sounds different from any other kit, especially recording. If an engineer's never worked with me before mm. and he starts putting the faders up, he gets lost real early because it doesn't sound like the normal kit. Mm. I've had this many times mm. starting from the 80s. And I've gone in, I said, well, look, put some down. Let me come and hear it. I play a little bit, a little groove, some toms, the cymbals. Mm. And I come in and I go, sounds great. And they go, but, okay, send me the track. Let's record to the music. And I go out and I lay the track down mm -hmm. and I come in and they go, mm. wow, <laughs> it, it's totally different. It, in the music, it sounds, I said, see, mm. it's, a, it's a different, I come from mm. a slightly different angle from that. And, mm. uh, and you get everything. You get an engineer who just loves it. You get an engineer who can't 
deal with it and you get some people I mean Bob Clear Mountain when he first recorded my drum kit he was doing the same thing uh, and it was only Jimmy Iovine that walked in and heard the snare he went hey Simon my name's Jimmy he said great snare drum sound and he had the talk back down and I could hear Bob go really <laughs> and then the talk back went off isn't that weird and then we, it was for a pretenders album we did the first track sounded great right. and I said to Bob I said Bob you've mixed this drum kit he said I, really this I said yeah he said was this big Yes, but you wouldn't know because in those days, drum kit had to go on eight channels or ten channels yeah. or tracks, you know. Yeah. So there's no way of knowing how many toms there are because you just have two faders, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and of course, after that, whenever I got to work with Bob, I mean, he was, you know, he because he, he got it. Mm -hmm. That's all it is.